for our next case, let us tell you a little bit about Hong Kong, where both of us have lived for approximately 10 years. As many of you know, Hong Kong is dynamic, global, and one of the most interesting cities in the world. A part of Hong Kong's story that most casual observers are not aware of is that embedded within Hong Kong's cosmopolitan makeup are hundreds of thousands of women that provide childcare, home care, and other household duties for many of Hong Kong's families. These women are designated as foreign domestic workers, but usually referred to as helpers, ai or auntie. There are approximately 400,000 of these women working in Hong Kong, most hailing from the Philippines or Indonesia. These women are generally paid around 570 US dollars a month, or roughly 7,000 US dollars a year, most of which is remitted back to their home countries to support their families. The reality is that most of these women work really hard for a salary that you and I may not consider very high, but the reality is that this salary is almost double the GDP per capita in the Philippines. And in the aggregate, these remittances by overseas workers, according to the World Bank data, account for approximately 10% of the Philippines' GDP. So individually and at a national level, the money really adds up and the impact of these wages is a very big deal. Now, how does this money in Hong Kong make its way to a family living in a village in somewhere in the Philippines? Well, besides being one of our course instructors, we're really fortunate that David Bishop is one of the world's foremost experts on issues related to domestic helpers and how to protect them from exploitation. So let's hear it from him about the issues that these women face when sending money back home. Okay, so for you out there, you might think that if you're going to send the money, maybe you have a bank account and you just do a bank transfer, right? Simple, problem solved. Unfortunately, for the tens of millions of migrant workers around the world, this is usually not possible since they are generally unbanked on both sides, meaning the foreign domestic workers in Hong Kong, many of them don't have a bank account here in Hong Kong. And their families, on the other side, the people they're sending money to, they typically don't have a bank account either. And so the workers receive their wages in cash, and they have to figure out how to get that cash from Hong Kong to their family in a remote village somewhere perhaps in the Philippines. Now to fill such needs, money remittance companies have sprung up all over the world. Now the most famous probably being Western Union. And for decades, this is how people transferred money. Now, as part of this process, there are two important things to know, which may not be apparent. Now, first, there's a physical component when remitting money. A worker has to physically go to one of these locations that's to hand them cash. Then on the other side, there's another physical location where the receiver has to go and pick up the money. So both sending and receiving is a very time and labor intensive process due to standing in lines, walking long distances, and perhaps waiting for and using public transportation, which comparatively may not be that cheap. In addition, many of these workers only have one day off a week, usually Sunday, so much of that day could be wasted trying to send money home. Now second is an issue of financial literacy. These money remittance companies charge fees that you and I may consider excessive, sometimes as high as eight or nine percent per transfer. Now additionally, currency conversion fees are typically not competitive. So even if a remittance company has a low rate for sending money, they will likely make money on the currency conversion, like when converting from say Hong Kong dollars to Philippine pesos. Now on top of all that, sometimes remittances can take time, at least a few days if not longer. Now I'm not saying these companies shouldn't make money for providing the service, but frequently their customers are not really that informed and they have very limited options. So a natural question is, what if that lost friction or time or unnecessary fees could be avoided or at least reduced? For many, the answer to that question, or at least an important component to that question, is the use of blockchain technology. Now today, there are a number of remittance services that are trying to employ some level of blockchain to minimize many of the frictions that we've discussed by promising to make remittances more efficient, secure, and or affordable. Now, as these innovators pressure incumbents, there will be a shift, first a trickle, but then a wave, as users become comfortable adopting new technology, bridging any cultural lag, and learning to trust new advances in technology. Overall, the breakthrough in blockchain is really exciting, and will be a game changer for many of these workers, as well as the millions of people around the world that transfer money daily. And in Module 6, we'll be looking into a really cool blockchain remittance service company called BitSpark that was formed right here in Hong Kong. So stay tuned for that.